Well, we are in the courthouse here in New Bedford where Lizzie's trial took place. And we'll just do a general pan all around. This would be the bench where judges Dewey, Blodgett, and Mason, there were three. I believe it's the original bench. I've seen newspaper sketches. And this does look like the, the paneling across here. I'm not sure who that is. We'll find out in a bit. Uh, they've moved the jury box recently. Uh, we're looking at the jury box on the right of the bench. For Lizzie's trial, it would have been over here. And that's been recently moved. All right, let's take a walk around. These are the original light fixtures. And it's a rainy day, so I don't know how good the lighting is going to be. Oh, these are beautiful. I guess they would have maybe have been gas light. Big windows, 16 over, uh, no, they're 12 over 12, I guess. Let in a lot of light. And this is where the ladies would queue up to get a seat. They were called the Daisies and the Valentines. They would come. Uh, here's one of the original tables with the original leather on the top. And the defense and prosecution tables are also original and they have recently been restored with new leather. Here are the brass pulls on the drawers and the fat chunky legs. Picture Robinson and Knowlton at these tables. There's actually uh, four of them here. They might have been all together at one point. The dock would have been on this side during Lizzie's trial and that dock has been moved over to the left side of the benches. And this is Hosea Knowlton portrait. It's been here as long as I can remember. Could do with a good cleaning. Now we're going to go up into the judge's uh, daos here. Um, take a good look at, I'm pretty sure this is original. It sure looks like it. And we'll have the judge's point of view of the defendant. And there's Lizzie. We've put a little cardboard cutout of Lizzie. You'll see her right in front of us. That would have been the defense and the prosecution. And we would have had Blodgett, Mason, and Dewey in these positions. Let's take a look at this beautiful ceiling with the fan shaped, uh, I don't know, rosette, I guess you'd call that. I'm not sure if these were gas lights or it was electric, possibly, at the time. Currently, there's a refurbishment going on. They're working on the outside, and then the ceiling's going to be scraped down and painted. Lizzie would make her entry in the morning from the back at the staircase. We'll go back and have a look at that. I'll do a 180 degree pan. That would have been the jewelry, the defense, Lizzie in her chair, and the reporters that Sheriff Wright, who was the bailiff at this trial, detested, would have been sitting over here. So let's go down now, as the judges would have done when they would make their exit back to their chambers. And we'll have a look at the doorway Lizzie would have come through. I think Lizzie is losing her hat. <laughs> and this would have been packed full of people.
beautiful uh, old bookcases and shelving, wainscoting, and woodwork, all original. I don't think these are the original chairs. And this would have been the entrance from the outside, the stairs that Lizzie would come up from the street to enter the courtroom. Picture her coming up these stairs. And the cheers when the verdict of not guilty. Very special place we're in now to the Borden story. I'm very lucky to get in today to see this. Very difficult now to gain access. Okay, now we're going to have a little look at the back. Uh, exit where she fooled the press and had a carriage waiting to make her get away with uh, Mr. Holmes in the, my, what was it, uh, Barouche, I think, carriage. Okay. One last look. Lizzie's on her way home.